Hi, I'm Roger, a software developer with SignalHound, and I'm going to take you on a walk through, through uh, the new interference hunting mode in Spike. So pull up Spike, and we can find interference hunting mode in analysis mode, interference hunting. So this is the, this is the basic interface, just kind of a number of components. So let's walk through. Um, at the top here we have the, the waterfall or spectrogram, which we can turn off or on and is also available in, in, in main swept analysis mode. Uh, this is the main sweep plot. And what is displayed in this plot is controlled by the regional zoom controller, which is this horizontal strip plot underneath it. And the regional zoom controller can controls what is visible in the main plot. So at any given time, the entire sweep based on your current span setting will be visible in the regional zoom controller. And then what is in the unshaded region is what's visible in the main plot. So let me pull up a, let me put a signal in here. Okay, so let's, I've just got this one gig CW going through here so we can demo some, some basic functionality. So let's look at the, the settings that are specific to this mode in the, um, which are mostly gonna be in this general control panel over here. So for baselines, the simplest kind of baseline is just a flat line, which is basically just an amplitude threshold. And anything above that threshold, which is the same at every frequency, is going to be considered an event. So if we go up here, then there's nothing going on. And now we see, of course, there's just an event where that CW is. And if we zoom in, we can see how the, the red bar uh, shows you the bandwidth of, of that event. And then down here in our event list, that event will show up. And this changes for every sweep. So, so this event list is always going to show the current events that, are, that were present in, in the last sweep. And we can arrange them. There's only one uh, event going on. But if there were more, we could arrange these. And they would continuously sort for, for each incoming sweep. So. What we can see the duration is uh, just steadily increasing here because the CW is constant. So let's look at, as you may have noticed me doing, we can change, there's only one setting really to change for a flatline baseline and that's the, uh, the actual amplitude of that baseline. So we just can move it up and down. I'm using the keyboard to go up and down with that amplitude. So it's easy to set that kind of baseline. And with these events, we can export them. We can clear them, which will clear the duration, which can be useful sometimes if we want to start over, even with a continuous event. And we can export them quickly here. That's basically just, we want to see a snapshot of the events that were going on at that moment. So it's kind of a quick way to do that. And just save it as a CSV file. I'm going to do a, a Bluetooth demonstration using an antenna. All right, so I've got an antenna hooked up. So let's get into the Bluetooth range. Kind of get ready for this. So we're gonna, our goal is gonna be to capture a Bluetooth signal from uh, this speaker, Bluetooth speaker that I have here that's gonna be hooked up to my phone and I'll turn it on uh, when we need it. So, so this is a Bluetooth range. So let's look into exclusion zones because this is going to be useful um, in order to isolate. Because we're only interested in Bluetooth here. So we don't want any, any other signals going on we're not interested in. So we don't need to be logging them. And we don't want to consider them events. Because that would just be kind of noise and what we're looking for. So let's call. So I'm going to set two exclusion zones one below Bluetooth, which will just encompass everything up to uh, 
uh, where Bluetooth starts at 2.4 gigahertz. And so now on the screen we see uh, this is this is the exclusion zone. So any event that's occurring in this area, well, can't occur. So there won't be no event. So if something's breaking the baseline in here, it won't be considered an event. And that's what exclusion zones do. And then I'll set one above Bluetooth, which will go from uh, point thing like that okay so that's going to be our area of interest so now we can see um, we're only going to focus on that narrow field uh, so just to show you there also we can also change if you wanted a different could use like a if that was easier to see and then you're not blocking out the the sweep as much you, um, but just to let you know in this measurements tab this is stuff that you're familiar with from other modes just basic markers that you have in swept analysis mode and others and then like you have your max hold and average traces that you can also have here if you want so in general, let's look at acquiring a baseline now, because that's the more interesting type of baseline. So these settings have to do with, with how a baseline is acquired. Uh, it's going to be acquired over a period of time. So let's kick this up to like, I don't know, 10 seconds. And the acquisition mode is, is going to be kind of what kind of accumulation function it's going to use uh, while it's acquiring the baseline. Average, it's just going to be an average of all the sweeps that occur during that time period while it's acquiring, and then max hold and min hold. So let's do a max hold uh, for 10 seconds, and now we just hit acquire baseline. And we'll wait 10 seconds. So now we've got our baseline. Let me turn off the exclusion zones briefly just so we can see the whole baseline easier. So this green line is, is that baseline we just acquired over 10 seconds and it was max held so that's why we see these, there were these spikes must have occurred at some point during that. So now, so now this, is, it's, it, this function is the same as the flat line. It's, just something we've acquired. And we can import and export uh, this acquired baseline. So if we get a really good one that we want to use in the future, can export it. It's got a kind of custom CSV format. And then um, can just reload that. So once you have a baseline acquired, you can use this offset field to move it up and down to kind of get it, you know, more inclusive or exclusive of uh, as far as capturing events. So let's look at the logging panel really quickly. I'm about to bring up the Bluetooth, but I want to log it because the goal here is to kind of set, like let's say there's, an, there's a Bluetooth signal that occurs, you know, once a day or just very intermittently. We want to know when, when it occurs and for how long. So that's when we would use the logging panel because the point of this is really to set a capture size of, it's pretty arbitrary, so we could go up to, I mean, this is one day, but you could have multiple days. If you, as long as your computer is running Spike, it will um, record or you run out of disk space. So we've got plenty, so that probably won't be a worry. So let's just set it to like one minute for now. But, um, so this will, it'll continuously log and it'll write to the file as the events occur. So if, some, if the program shuts down or something, the file is still going to exist with whatever it captured up to that point. And just all events will just simply be logged to the CSV file and it will have the same fields um, as, as the event list. 
All right, so we're in our logging panel and we're gonna start recording. We don't, I'll leave it at unlimited events because there's no reason to cap off the number of events we can choose. If we want, you can set a max maximum events and just whichever happens uh, first, whether the time runs out or the max events are hit, it, it would stop recording at that time. And then max file size, that's also not, not a concern now. So we've got kind of the default save directory chosen here, and this is the default file prefix. You can change those. So I'm going to get the Bluetooth ready, and then we're going to record and, um, and fire that up. I'm going to turn on our wonderful exclusion zone. So now we just have this Bluetooth range isolated. Start logging. And now I'm going to turn on Bluetooth. Okay, so there's a special, a special lot of activity when, when it turns on and off. So that, I'll start streaming to keep the activity going. And then now that we're halfway through logging, I'll turn off. Bluetooth. So we see now the events captured is not going to increase very much. So we'll be able to see in the log kind of where it started and stopped. Alright, so our capture is now finished. So let's look in the folder where the, the logs appear and see that's today at the right time. So let's open this up in Excel and see what we have. So these are all the events that occurred during that uh, one minute time period. And yeah, this is, well, let's walk through because it's some, some of it's might, might not be um, self evident. Center frequency and bandwidth that is refer of the event itself. Um, and there's, there are settings you can change if you'd rather see start and stop frequency. It's kind of six, one half dozen or the other, which of those, um, just personal preference, which way you'd rather specify the frequency. And then level can also be specified to be channel power. And better bring you back here. If you'd rather see, um, you can have either the peak level that occurred in the event or the channel power, which will be surrounding the center uh, frequency. And you can either set it to auto bandwidth or if you want to choose your own bandwidth to calculate the power, you can do that. And then there's also a duration format. Um, you can see it in just seconds or in kind of a familiar uh, clock format. And that will all be reflected in the CSV. So threshold refers to, that's the, th the amplitude value that was a threshold of the baseline at the frequency point. And then margin is going to be basically the number of decibels above the threshold that the peak level of that uh, event was. And so even if you have the level set to channel power, this is still going to use the peak level to make that calculation. And then the time that the event occurred is here. And the duration, see these are all very uh, brief events. So they're actually registering as zero. We've got some slightly longer ones at a couple hundred milliseconds. These are like blips. So, which basically mean what zero in, you know, in actual actually means is that it was just one sweep that they existed for. So these persisted over uh, multiple sleep sweeps. And then I have overload, that's basically to tell you that the, the data is, is junk, or at least notify that there's, there was a problem. And so if, if there was um, an overflow situation, then you, yeah, and I trust the data. Whoops. So yeah, that, that pretty much wraps up this demo I basically just wanted to introduce all the kind of basic functionality of this mode. Um, one thing that I will mention that I didn't discuss before 
you you may not need to um, mess with too much. Is but for events, once you have a baseline and are capturing events, this minimum duration and frequency deviation fields, the minimum duration specifies the minimum. I mean, it's self-explanatory, but the minimum amount of time that an event has to persist for you to consider it, it an event. So if you had really steady signals, you might crank this up a little bit in order to not worry about uh, blips, if you didn't want to worry about really brief signals. On the other hand, if you want to capture everything, then you would want to keep it at zero, which is the default, to make sure, that to assume that you don't want to miss anything. Um, and then deviation is going to be the maximum allowable difference in center frequencies between two consecutive sweeps for an, for an event to be considered, or for, for a baseline violation incident to be considered part of the same event. So um, if you wanted, again, if you had a really steady signal, you could dial this down because you could tolerate a, a very small amount. You'd only tolerate a very small amount of deviation because it's a very steady signal. But you might have a signal that's wobbling a lot. And if you have a really wobbly signal, you'd want to set this up really high to make sure that you, um, the events get considered the same event. OK, I think uh, that's probably long enough. So thank you, everybody, for watching. And um, stay tuned for more.